Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel for another collab between myself and Miles, uh, the start of a very special series very which very we've special. been planning for a short while. Um, I came up with this idea last year and we nearly ran it for the 60th but then there was so much else going on at that time that we just yeah. thought push it back. It was our um, answer to the Doctor Who magazine. Our answer. <laughs> 60 so, years, yeah, 60 so for anyone that doesn't know, last year Doctor Who magazine ran a... Yeah, 60 Years, 60 Objects, I think it's called. A series of articles where each issue they'd go through year by year, Doctor Who's history, and pick out one item that sort of summed up that year, supposedly. Mm. Yeah. Uh, did you get... <sighs> did you feature in those? In one of them? I... Ooh, was Battles um, in Time mentioned in it, or...? I can't remember now. I don't think so. No. Well, actually, interestingly enough, um, I was reading this um, the other day, and I realised they've used some of my photos of those Invader and Ultimate Monsters boxes Cheeky without buggers. asking. Um, oh my god. <laughs> well, so, on that note... I'm looking forward to the court case. <laughs> my god. Yeah. Um, so, there's going to be an ICV drama about that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never mind. Mr. Lloyd versus Doctor Who magazine. Never mind the Millie Gibson thing. This no, is no. the scandal you want. Oh. So, um, yeah, that series, it was nice... A nice enough, but it was a bit of a weird one because mm. sometimes they'd have like an item of merchandise, and then sometimes they'd have like a prop from the show or something, and it became a bit of a parody by the end because they'd do these call outs on Twitter for like, um, I don't know, anyone who visited Forbidden Planet London between March no and April, like 1994, <laughs> yeah. and went downstairs and got a book off the shelf. Um, please contact us. Right? I love the memes around that time when they. I think oh, they'd done like a, a thing of like, do you have a VHS recording of the five doctors from 1983? Yeah. And I think people were like, have you breathed air in the past five minutes? Would you like to? Yeah. It's just, it was, it did become a Did you buy an eighth doctor BM set with the tenth doctor inside us? <laughs> yeah. It, it was crazy hilarious. little yeah. stuff like that. It was, it, was, um, it was strange. So we thought we'd do our own take on that. A mm. um, bit more personal. A bit more personal. Obviously not 60 years, because we're not that old, <laughs> but we yeah, have been to well. the show. Well, we've been to the show uh, since 2008, stroke yeah. seven, so we can. there's 16 years to play with here, 16 objects to yes. talk about. We're going to break this down to four parts, so today we'll do the first part um, for 2008, 9, 10 and 11. Yeah. So an object from each year, um, the rules that I've kind of gone with, so it has to be something that was released that year mm -hmm. and that we also acquired in that year and hopefully that's going to generate some interesting stories and yeah. nostalgia and stuff. So it both can't be like, um, I bought this Target book in 2008 because yeah. that came out in the 70s exactly. and it also can't be, I went back and bought the whole of the first classic wave which came out in 2008 yes. because we bought it in 20 exactly yeah. something that's really kind of of its time hopefully yes. yeah. um so yeah let's let's get into this i think so first of all um you got into the show a little bit before me so mm. do you have an item for 2007 as a brief sort of warm up for the yeah the main thing yeah so i do i do yeah. um as we mentioned in the previous video we just did for my channel about how we've watched first episode episodes for the first time. Um, my cousin was the one who got me into Doctor Who, mm. um, so he had a lot of merch, and I've just rem I've just realised there's an object I should have really bought, but I I didn't I didn't bring it. Interesting. Um, okay. So um, it took me a while. I think 2007. I hadn't really started to get merch myself. Of course. Yeah. Um, but by by the end of that year, I do remember. Um, I think I had thoroughly got into the show, and the item that I've chosen. I haven't actually brought myself because it would be too big to bring, but I can see it in the corner over there. So I'm picking for 2007, my item, and I hope it came out that year, um, uh, okay. was the TARDIS playset. The, Interesting. Um, yeah. Fully lights and sounds, rotor moving up and down, tenant TARDIS console room. I feel like it might have been 2006, but I'll, okay. I, will, I will let you have it, it's fine, <laughs> because it was, it was worth talking about that, because yes. I, mean, I got it as well later on, mm -hmm. um, I think like 2008 or 9, and I remember the thrill of like seeing that box in, it was in Wolves, I think it was, mm -hmm. and, and bring it home, and my dad having to help me put it together, because... I was only seven. Oh, I, couldn't do I it don't myself, think I even it. touched it. I think, no. I think my dad did everything. <laughs> um, lot, my, yeah. I remember this one here, if you've yeah. probably seen the corner, the 2010 yeah, yeah, yeah. one. I think uh, I remember getting that for Christmas Day um, and um, 
my dad being like, do you need a hand with it? I'm like, yeah, could you help me make it all? And I think by the time <laughs> I'd opened the box and saw how many bits there were, I was like, see you later, I'm just going to play with my Paradigm Daleks for a bit and you can <laughs> you can build that for me. Oh, um, yeah. But I remember, even if... I, I swear, I did. I think I googled it and I'm pretty yeah. certain, maybe it was the start of 2007 that it, the TARDIS playset came out. It might, you'd have to check, yeah. Yeah, we'd have to check. Have we'll, we'll refer to, Maybe you could yeah. put a little... Uh, caption down here to yeah, say whether I'm right or wrong. Sure. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely remember getting it that year because I remember being very young. I would have been seven years old. We'd been in a massive traffic jam um, on the M whatever, um, really long, and I'd been I'd been really patient. I hadn't I hadn't caused a fuss. I just sat there quietly, and my parents were like, "You know what? We, he he deserves a treat." <laughs> Um, so we, we pulled off uh, off the road for a bit and I was like, where are we going? And then saw the big Toys R Us banner <laughs> go into the store um, and and there's the big display. There's David Tennant looming over with his sonic yeah. screwdriver. That, that Toys R Us display, I mean, I could put that as my item <laughs> for the year. Um, but uh, yeah, went in there and got to choose the 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 treat and it was the, the TARDIS playset mm. and I remember the box was laid out so that there was like a cut out of tenant the tenant action figure wasn't that, there? that's right yes and then you could put your hand you could put your hand in and you could yeah. press the and test the, the button, yeah. button. Yeah. um I mean what a treat and yeah. and that playset got so much use oh, um, yes. I'm surprised that the cardboard bit is still was still kind of yeah, in one piece it's, uh, yeah I've since taken yeah. it apart and it's it's sort of packed away in a big a massive sort of storage box currently it's in my right. bedroom still yes. it's still tucked away uh, i will never part with that because that. it was just glorious yeah so lovely it's so big as well isn't it like Blue, huge and, <laughs> and massive you don't get play sets like that anymore i think no. that was kind of one of the last of its kind oh, um yeah. i remember a mate of mine had the bat cave and that was like a huge you yeah know, huge play set but that in terms of doctor who you know mm. day paul eat your heart out like yes it was brilliant Fantastic. We we are looking off camera to the set. Yeah, and no. I think it would just be too. It would just take up this whole. It w- I mean, space. It, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a nightmare. So, and I have to say that the place I've got it now, finally for the first time in years, it's like somewhere where there's yeah. actually enough space for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I could never like, find a shelf that no, was big right, enough through to, the years. My I think was always on the floor to begin with, yeah. and then when we got the when I got the uh, Matt Smith one. That kind of went in its place, and the other one I think went on top of my wardrobe, and then it spent some years in the loft. Wow. Um, in in. Still assembled, <laughs> still assembled, just Gosh. like uncovered. I'm surprised it's still here. Right? Like, yeah, I'm sure there were like things with mice or rats going on up there. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know whether any mice have run across it ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dread thing. But anyway, operating um, the controls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then yeah, so finally now it's it's, it's in its proper place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a humongous thing, but a, a great pick. So many cool little so features like right the the buttons and mm-hmm. the. The thing from Boomtown where the thing flips open and it just oh you know, the amount of fun I had with that and it go all yeah. the sound effects perfect I've mm. never been able to I want to go to character options and be like where did you get all the WAV files for all those sound effects because oh, I've never yeah. been able to find like I want specific TARDIS sound effects yeah and I've never been able to find them like the whoosh of the TARDIS when you press a certain button it's it was just Beautiful. hours of fun mm. um, I think nothing sums up that kind of the early days of, no. of Doctor Who exciting merchandise like that does. Um, but I, I suppose if that if that didn't come out 2007, then um, I will pick uh, an item that I could have brought, the first issue of Doctor Who Adventures that I got, of which course. was yes. 2007. It was an image of Dalek Sek, a Scarecrow, and a Carry Knight, I think, on the front. Mm. The issue, I still have it somewhere. It's beaten up. The posters have been taken out because I used them and all that sort of stuff. But um, it was a brilliant... That was my first bit of merch, I think, that I'd had bought for me. And uh, great memories of being mm. in London when Dad bought that for me, and the madness. I mean, he must regret buying that for me now because that <laughs> spiraled off into this. So um, well, yes. Okay. Anyway, so that's, that's I mean my that's, pick. A, that's a nice segue because I could have very easily picked for two thousand and eight mm. uh, my first issue of Doctor Adventures. It was the thing that got me involved mm. in the first place. Like I mean, like you say, I've still got mine as well, and to the posters out. I recently, or fairly recently, kind of went back. I had a wodge of posters. Hmm. I thought, right, I'm going to try and piece put them. these yeah, back into the yeah, issues yeah. they belong in. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was a fun little I thing. I think I well, have staples like in that magazine because I tried to 
put it back together in bits. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I remember, do you remember Daily Mirror or something like that? Did like a a series of free issues, like mini issues of Doctor Who Adventures. Yes. And they did like a Dalek one, a Cyberman one, and and I think my my grandma got those those magazines with her paper um, and gave me them bit by bit. And the Weeping Angel one, when she brought the newspaper home it had been soaking wet that day the newspaper oh, was sopping through yeah. and she's like i'm so sorry i've put it on the radiator for you and this is but this is the, <laughs> this is the this is the one that came with this oh week oh my god and it's yeah. like cr- crumpled like like nobody's business yeah. um and i think that i've got like staples in the side of it because i tried to piece it together but yeah it's a happy happy days happy days. incredible but yeah um, sorry you're 2008 your yeah i mean here we are and um it could very easily have been been that um the thing I've I've gone with instead, and I, I can't remember whether we've talked about this before on the channel or not, but it is the uh, the sticker oh, collection, excellent which um, was just as iconic and impactful, mm-hmm. just as loved. I mean, this has like sticky back plastic on the cover. Yep, uh, it's falling apart. It's did you put that on yourself? To try and... I think my my parents did for yeah. me, but, but yeah, it, it was um because I mean these things. And they were like thin paper and the best mm-hmm. of times, so you can imagine. Um, but this, I mean, in like we were saying in that previous video on your channel, actually, I mean, so much of this was about um, obviously those early episodes. I mean, here, you know, you've, you've got stuff from series four, my, my first series that I was mm-hmm. watching, but also stuff from series three, like mm-hmm. last year's. I always used to think Weeping Angels were green because of that. Because, yeah, exactly. I always thought, oh, they're like a green and it's stone. It's like so weird, like seeing all these characters together like the tenth doctor and donna mm-hmm. with a load of like series three monsters yeah. and like banner cattle after and nude and stuff yeah um but yeah so like we were saying with this um it, it's just and i've always found this with with like sticker books and stuff like the oh first God, you completed the dalek i completed thing. the dalek yeah it's, it's a well the whole thing is complete apart from some of those extra stickers at the back oh. which i think they were like uh no, I don't think it was a newspaper thing. It was like a thing where you sent off to the publisher and they sent you them. Oh, it was so that they could include stuff from the latter half of series four. Ah, uh, okay. Without without putting um, spoilers in there. Putting spoilers yeah, yeah. in there, exactly. So clever, some of them clever. you can get on like I think newspaper sheets, but the rest of them you still put God knows where. If, if anyone has any, please get in touch. Yeah, um, right. As well, I'd love to go back and get one of these as well and have like a pristine one. Yeah. That'd be that'd be really nice. Um, but yeah, no, I've always found with sticker collections like. Um, I vividly remember this would have been about two thousand and five, I suppose, and I've still got it in my bed. Like the um, the Incredibles, the the oh, Pixar yeah, film, yeah, and the, yeah. the thing they had for that with the album, the stickers. Mm-hmm. That was my first experience of of doing that. Once again, it's covered in sticky back plastic, and it's it's complete. And I got all the stickers, and they're all kind of there, sort of slightly clumsily placed over the yeah. the boxes and yeah. stuff. But with with both that and then this as well, it's always that that thing that I loved about these stickers where i mean just for instance if we go with maybe um gosh the pages are so brittle (laughs) they really are something like because like this for instance last of the time lords i mean one of the spreads there for last of the time lords it's almost like a a it's comic book isn't it it's like a comic book yeah it's 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 always interesting the moments they pick and how these images are kind of seared into your your mind at that early age as well and Something I've always loved about that, like how, yeah, how they, how they sort of tell the story, like mm-hmm. with that Incredibles one as well. Like it's a film that you know, but like you have these little snapshots, the like yeah. the bite-sized moments, and and yeah, to kind of going back through it even now for that reason, it has that nostalgia because these, like I was saying with with the DVD, I had to watch video. It's like this is how you should have experienced some of these stories for it the first is, time. It really is, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't remember exactly, but there must have been some of these stories that I. Sort of collected the stickers for before I'd actually kind of watched them as well. 100%, 100%. So it's it's all part of of that kind of early experience as a fan. See, the series um, three one was the one I I got first. You know, the purple, the purple, purple one. one. Yes, uh, yes. And that so do you, was a similar thing? Yeah, you got that one. Still got that somewhere. Yeah. Yep, I remember. Did you complete it? I I I may I probably came close, but I don't think. Interesting. I I remember looking at that. You know that back panel, like you've got that big sticker in the, the, in the end. The completion. Um, yeah. Complete, you know, whatever I remember looking at that and being like, then, oh, yeah. I'm never going to get, I'm never going to do that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I, I did oh, get a good few. Yeah. Um, I think my one, you know, like you were saying that your Incredibles one is kind of your other obsession yeah, at yeah. the time. I think mine was 
heinous, I know, but football cards um, yeah. that shoot out. I've managed <laughs> to get a full set of uh-huh. a full Chelsea squad and all that sort of stuff. Um, disgusts me now. Um, <laughs> awful part of my life. Um, but um, yeah, that Series 3 one was on, I remember. And I remember actually it was so special to me because I managed to find, or maybe my mum managed to find a pack of the Series 1 stickers. Right, um, yeah, the one with Eccleston on the yes, front. Course, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously I didn't have the sticker book for that. So I just was like, I'm going to find a page in the back of this and stick all those stickers oh, okay. in. And I'm also going to stick the packet in as well so I remember what that yeah. looked like and yeah. stuff. So it's like my own mini collection of them. Lovely. Um, so I could have very easily picked that for, mm. for mine as well. I mean, that, I guess that would have been 2007 as well. That would have been, that, yeah. Um, I, I, see, I've gone back, because that was my first, but I've gone back pretty recently actually and collected that one yeah. and the Series 1 one as well. Um, I'm, I'm frustratingly close to like having full sets. There's wow. like a couple that I need from each one. Still, in this, in this Still, kind of day and age of you know, yeah, trying to um, track them all So down. if anyone has any spares, get in touch. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. lovely stuff. I, I mean, love, loving those. And mm. um, I've not picked any Battles in Time myself, but I, they could have very easily been. Deserves a shout out. Deserves a shout out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Invaders, so the 2007 yeah. set, was sure. the first one I properly got into. Um, a huge amount of fun with those. Really great yeah. set of cards, and then the Devastators, obviously the Devastators would be yeah. For yeah. Me. Uh, um, I don't think I got as many yeah. Devastators as I did Invaders. I think Invaders, mm. I was just. I think I got the full set. I think I'm pretty certain I got the full set. I've rearranged my into I think episode, you know order. Yeah. Into episode yeah. order, and they look lush. They look really nice. Um, so yeah, I think I was only missing the odd few. Um, but yeah, the days of collecting, they've got to be, it's got to be worth a shout out, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what, what I would have done to have like a 2023 version with the Doctor yeah. and Donna for the 60th and just as like a throwback. Yeah. You could have had your beat the, beat the meat there the meat and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, right. And then, shooty. like maybe, maybe like a bit of shooty, like because he'd have probably a yeah. page in there of what's to come. Yeah, have Jinx Monsoon on the cover. Yeah, like really bizarrely, like a weird oh, mix. You would probably have like stuff from Power of the Doctor on there as well. Like probably the yeah, hangover. Yeah, yeah. Um, there we go. Yeah, what a great. Oh, it's a really good pick. That. Yeah. Um. So, what I've gone for for two thousand and eight. Yeah. I kind of wanted to go for a different item for this year, but I realised that the one I wanted to go for had come out in two thousand and six. Um. But I wanted to just give this kind of part of merch a shout out. Mm. And I don't know if you'll pick anything later down the line that's like this, but okay, um, I decided to go for, if I can find it, where is it? There we go. Uh, the Series 4 ah, okay. soundtrack. Yeah. Um, because nice. the soundtracks were such a huge part of my yeah. enjoyment of getting into the show and enjoying the show. Um, and I remember Series 4 being a particularly, like, when this soundtrack came out, it was like, I recognise all these tracks, you know, and um, I can probably name like all of them, you know, yeah. give or take. Um, like corridors and fire escape. And equally, or, equally and all and the ones that I'd skip, like I'd never listened to all in the mind. Yeah. I'd always be like, nope, skip that one. <laughs> um, and the, being the greatest story never told being like seven minutes long. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is a slog. I'm just going to skip. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, the soundtracks, Murray Gold's music, mm-hmm. um, fantastic stuff. Um, the first album that I got was the 2006 um, of course. series one and yeah. two. And it was like the slipcover version with the Doctor and Rose on the front, as opposed to just Tenant like that. Yes. They were like back to back. Yes. And it came with a badge yeah, yeah. as well. Um, ah, and that was the first badge. album that my dad's ever bought for me. Um, surprising that. I wonder why he bought me a Doctor Who album. Um, and I remember getting that, putting it on in the kitchen and listening to Love Don't Roam and all mm. that sort of stuff. So I wanted to give that kind of time a Absolutely. shout out in yeah. some form. And I think Series 4 is a really good epitome of that because it's Murray Gold at its best. Um, series 3 and 4 are some fantastic soundtracks. So um, that was my pick yeah. for 2008 um, of that amazing era, really. And also that theme tune. It's the thing. It's my the best theme oh, tune yeah, in my opinion. Best, so, yeah, I mean the soundtracks for me. Um, I th- again, like I was saying with the DVD box sets, I kind of and I, I actually bought them a bit later down the line. Mm-hmm. I kind of went back to fill the gaps and stuff. Yeah. I think the series seven one was the first one I actually got at the time, and it was mm-hmm. I've still got it. Like the um, is it the one that was in the paper? It's l- yeah, of, like the kind yeah. of whatever it is, the kind of cardboard case mm-hmm. rather than the the plastic case and. Mm-hmm. I remember that arriving and like sticking in a CD player and playing the tracks in my room and stuff. Yeah. But, and before that as well, like I'd maybe buy the odd track on Amazon or whatever and like download them to my little iPod 
yeah, shuffle or whatever. Like the, the, the cheap little iPod that was like a little cube, and um, or like I'd, I'd illegally get them off like websites and stuff like uh, yes, or yeah, ripping yeah, them yeah, off get all these, sorts, these yeah. tracks and things. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're right; they were such a big part of the the show at that time, and also um, a part a part of my kind of creative growing up as well these were the the tracks that i put on my fan films and yes. on my yeah. figure animations and oh, yes. and that i was seeing online on youtube that you know all these tracks became almost more synonymous with the work that people were doing online than they yeah. did with the show if that uh, makes sense because yeah. these were kind of especially in the earlier days i think were almost specially recorded for the album as opposed to like taken directly i think certainly for series one and two uh, definitely those, those were like yeah. specially recorded definitely for those ones so yeah you almost don't recognise them cues from the show. No, you kind of go back to the episodes sometimes and mm. it's like a different version. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, this isn't, this isn't quite what I'm mm. used to. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, huge, huge part of it and big shout out to Murray Gold. Um, yeah. You soundtrack to my childhood. <laughs> so, yes. Um, 2009. 2009. Um, so I've gone with something that I think we have probably talked about in the past. Um, mm-hmm. So... I mean, a shout out to all of the trading cards that came out around this time. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad that you picked these. We talked about battles in time. Yes. Um, I think the final set of data was still hanging around by 2009. So I probably got some that year as Did well. Did Ultimate Monsters come out of that 2009? Or was that 2008? I think that might have been two. I think that was like. Oh, that was between Invaders, I think that was wasn't like it? Spring 2008, and then else uh, the Devastators maybe like autumn 2008. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of other merch that came out in 2009, I mean, there weren't, I mean, there were figures, but it was the classic stuff, so I wasn't interested back then, so I've got those later down the line. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've gone with the Alien Armies uh, trading cards, which were one of those things, quite a short-lived thing that just kind of lasted for that year, and it was just like a one-shot thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got two of those actually there, because that's my original one. And then um, the guy that actually runs the Black Archive, uh, the, oh. the photo site, was very kind to send me uh, his original game board. Was it in the packaging? His, his cards as well. It wasn't in the packaging, but it was in very, very good condition. Mm-hmm. And um, I was able to fill the gaps in my collection thanks to him. So very, very grateful for that. Um, complete set? Complete, well, yeah. Bar apart the doctors. from the limited... It's a really silly thing with these, like the limited edition ones. Um, there's like... A number of limited edition ones that were made, and then some of them were distributed and some of them weren't. Ah, yes. So they were like for newspaper promotions that never happened. Mm-hmm. So you can still get them, like Donna or The Master or Weeping Angel, but you're paying quite a lot of money for them. Right. Um, I'm glad that you've given this set a, sh- a shout out as yes. well, because Battles in Time is so, it's obviously fantastic and it's mm. so renowned, but Alien Armies was one that kind of went under the radar that was really yes. nicely produced cards. Um, very yeah, it was, lovely quality. I always think, you know, with this and then with Alien Attacks as, as well, they're like in one category yeah. and then Battles in Time and Monster Invasion are in another category. Yeah, they're, so they're, these ones yeah. were like slightly nicer card stock and like finishes and stuff on they're them. They're more like a football card. A bit more than, premium, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, the designs and stuff weren't as exciting. It was just like a kind of block colour. But there was a consistency to them which was quite It nice. makes them very nice yeah. to look at. Yes, I mean, they're, that's like your gadgets on the, the first page there. Um, and all you get those again, like as foil ones later down the line, and then chronologically yeah. ordered from series one. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, series one, isn't it? series two, isn't it? So we'd see a series, series four doctor representing. Yeah, the, yeah. There's yeah. a few things like that in here, yeah. um, but just as an example, there. I mean, so nice to see all the characters yeah. in order um, with their nice color coded backgrounds. Very easy to kind of tell what's what, like what's a monster, what's a an ally, what's a doctor, what's a companion. It really does hark um, back to the alien attack stuff, doesn't it? That's the kind of, this is the vibe that they're clearly going for, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Know, the, the and sort of match attacks. So then there's like the, the glittery ones. Yeah. Glittery ones there. And um, nice. the, if I can find them, the nice sort of shiny, like, foily. Did I, I think I gave you a Supreme Dark. Oh, yeah. One, didn't I? Is it that one on the that top one there, corner there, there yeah. yeah. There we go. I'm and glad to have contributed. I can sort of see how these are showing up on camera as well. The nice sort of rainbow effect. Yeah, they're, they're really, really nice. It was the uh, doctor cards at. though that to me were like so the, stunning, beautiful, the shiny ones. Yeah, these they're ones just there. gorgeous. Yeah. And it's the Gallifreyan embossed yes. text that's yeah. on there. I mean, they're a lovely sort of set in their own right, aren't they? Just of the doctors. The only one I had was Sylvester McCoy. 
Can you believe yeah. that? Madness. I mean, like I say, for years, I had all the commons, and I, was, I had quite a few gaps in the, the shinier ones, and um, yeah, the, these ones in particular always, you know, the embossed ones always seemed quite Gorgeous. sort of hard to get hold yeah. of, and yeah, always wanted, always wanted them, so <laughs> the, really they grateful. They did Bernard Cribbins dirty with that yeah. image. <laughs> He's sort of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> love that, uh, love dear. that. And then, oh yeah, so that, I mean, that's the... That's something else on the left hand side. Exciting! Look at right that. Side. Thanks to uh, our friend Pete, actually. For, oh, Pete for gave me those. Yeah, amazing. Um, I, I remember this card coming in the Doctor Who magazine. Ones. Yes. Um, so one of them was, yeah. was Doctor Who magazine. That's the reason I got that issue, actually. Stuff. It was yeah. the, the one with Sarah Jane and yeah. the brig on the front, I think. Oh no, Sarah Jane and um, the tenth Doctor. Oh, the tenth Doctor, Doctor Sarah yes. Jane, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that's other stuff there. But yeah. I've loved those. In fact, now you're talking about Doctor Who magazine as well. It reminds me of another item I could have picked for this year, um, that, I, that pick. did occur to me. Um, but I think in the end, I thought I'll I'll wait and have an issue later down the line. Um, but okay. yes, my my Planet of the Dead uh, issue, um, the first one that I got, Easter 2009, um, was in a news agent, and I saw it on the shelf. I was getting Doctor Who Adventures at the time. I was like eight years old. Went and like had a flick through it, and my parents were like, "Oh, God, we, we yeah, have he's, it we've got to buy him now. We can't, we can't <laughs> just put it back on the shelf. He's <laughs> got a proper sort of flick through, and yeah. got his green mitts all over it. So, um, yeah, I had that one single issue, and nothing. No the more until a few years later. Yeah, I have a feeling um, I know which issue you might pick then for your. Who knows? Who, who knows? knows? Well, yeah. it's funny we're talking about Doctor Who magazine because for two thousand and nine, I've gone with something magazine shaped. Um, I was toying between two items, but I ended up settling on this. Ooh, so this very nice. um, is the 200 Golden I've Moments issue. Yeah. Um, it was an absolute tome for me. Yeah. Um, this is kind of what I guess they're going for. That it's a similar idea, isn't it? Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so oh, wow. I remember going on a holiday in Ireland, I think when I got this, Um and seeing it in the shops, I mean, a striking cover of Hartnell and Tennant on there, it's beautiful, uh, yeah. either side of this beautiful golden cover. Um, and essentially, all it is is a moment from every episode of the each Doctor story. Oh, You've got Hartnell yeah. there, and and it's really. I think they did a big poster of all of those um, those Doctors behind their in front of their Tardises. Um, and each story has a moment Ooh, okay. picked out of it. Yeah. And then an author... I mean, I think Stephen Moffat wrote one. There we go. Gary Russell um, wrote about the Ambassadors of Death. Uh, and they pick out a kind of... A defining moment from that story or a defining moment from Doctor Who. Um, and for me, as someone who hadn't... Who had dipped into the classic series um, but not really experienced it fully, this was just such a an insight into another world that I hadn't yeah. experienced. I mean, look at that, the three Doctors. And it's like what we were saying you know? before, like having something like a book or a magazine that yeah. has all the episodes in order, mm-hmm. like allows you to kind of comprehend yeah. what the classic series is. Isn't exactly it? that. Um, and I think some Lovely, I... some episodes got two moments, some episodes got a bigger okay. spread than others. Yeah. Um, and so... this goes up to what, series four? Four next doctor maybe no so two hundred oh planet of the dead includes. was the mighty two hundred and look at speaking of the DVDs as well look at that there. look at Lovely. them look at that fifteen ninety nine for a I mean ten ninety nine for a vanilla of planet yeah. of the dead but then a fiver five for of, that's all the a, vanilla releases a yeah, yeah. fifteen ninety nine I mean no one likes image of the Fendal that much um, so yeah, yeah I think it was always oh, it was lovely. done to tie in with that. Planet of the Dead thing. Very yeah. um, a coincidence. Given Absolutely. That, yeah. I imagine, in fact, that the issue that you got first came out the same time. As Would this. have been the same. Yeah, the same, um, same time, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I can't remember. I all, I got another issue in two thousand and nine. Uh, oh no, I got two. Sorry. There's the a regular the, the issue. wedding of River, River Song. No, wedding of uh, Sarah, Sarah Jane. Jane. Yeah. And there's also um, there was an issue with the three doctors on the front. Uh, of cover. course. Yes. Um, they must have both come out two thousand and nine. Um, yes, I think so. I don't know why I got the one with the three doctors on. Maybe I just loved the look of it, and I was like, I really love, I love that. And I don't think I read any of the words in it. I just looked at the yeah. pictures. Um, but this, I do remember. I actually it was kind of one of the first times when I was like avidly reading the about these moments and and um, and exploring an era of the show which I hadn't really looked into before. And also, there he is, my favorite favorite doctor of the lot. 
David Tennant with a quote that makes him sound like the the Ninth Doctor, and it is going to be fantastic. <laughs> um, uh, but yes, um, that's that's my pick. Very very nice. Um, I, mean, I yeah I um, I never got any of those early. Mm-hmm specials obviously of Doctor Who magazine but I'd love to kind of go back and, and get some because I for Christmas actually my mum found me a big um, stash of Doctor Who magazines from the 90s right, I right, think it's okay. like issue 200 mm. I'll show you like right there oh my god they're, and they're all when the spines are just yeah, yeah yeah just when the spines are um, like they are now and um, there were some of the specials mm-hmm. well, like the winter specials <laughs> summer specials or whatever they were mm-hmm. from that time as well but I think they kick started the, the run of specials when the series came back or yeah. around that time mm-hmm. so there's there's a few from that era that I think I, I bought I, need to go I bought one to. from uh, Scott Hancock the script editor of Doctor oh, Who yes. Um, yes. he was selling a few things on eBay and I think he sold there was these a series of special issues they did I think it was like in their own words in their um, own words that sounds and it's like a TARDIS familiar. in the middle yeah. and it's like um, yeah. basically I think it's interviews with all the cast that have been yes. in issues and they've kind and of they compiled them into ones, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think uh, the one I bought was like from 99 to 2000 yes uh, 7 or 8 did well. you ever get any of the um, like the, the behind the scenes ones like whatever they called them the, the companion was it the, the Doctor Who companion specials I did yeah. for 2013 yes oh uh, yeah because that was yeah. my first one yeah, yeah. I, I interesting never got actually before that, but uh, I, yeah. yeah that might be who knows when that might pop up I don't interesting. know interesting um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean I had no idea about kind of that this was a special edition Doctor Who magazine it was no. just like this looks lovely and it was kind of the one that i i went for um and doc two magazine i think started being a thing by 2011 for me when i mm-hmm. got the one with the paradigm dalek on the front and all right yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah Before doc two against. magazine definitely deserves a, a shout out it's a shame that i couldn't have put doc two adventures on here as well i probably should have done but um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. This was just a real tome, and it, I was grappling between this and the. Uh, in fact, I brought it anyway, just in case I decided last minute to change my mind. Um, where is it? At least I think I did. Maybe I didn't. I didn't. No, never mind. Uh, but we did. We did talk about it in another video, the Companions and Allies book. Oh, of um, course. Yes. Which was one of those. Yeah. I never got the monster ones because my cousin no. had got those and I remember flicking through them but the Companions and Allies one was finally like a chance for yeah. here's my one. Yeah. Similar for me, like I think I I flicked through the monster ones in like the school library mm-hmm. but so uh, yeah, that was the first one, the Companions one that I actually owned myself. Another real Lovely. tome yeah, of like, you know, getting into the classic series yeah. and all that oh, sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Great pick. Um, so 2010, here we go. Um, lots of stuff happening this year lots of series five themed stuff from mm-hmm. Matt Smith um, you know uh, and so for this I just kind of went gut instincts with one of those pieces or rather what, two technically I think I know I think I know bag. what you're going to pick so we have the originals which have both since been replaced but uh, the crash set with the Raggedy Doxer and the uh, the Susan and Booted series five tweed well do you know what I'm going to pick for my item for 2010? <laughs> there they are. Oh, the Toys R Us. Ones? So yeah. So yeah, did you not get nice. the Toys R Us set? I got them later on, but no. So these mm-hmm. um, both came from BBC Shop, I think, online. Oh, they I, were doing I BBC Shop um, around that time. Yeah, I wasn't quite as on it with like because I know you could get them like straight away, couldn't you? These like after the yeah. episode had gone out, I wasn't quite that mm-hmm. on it, but. Um, I did get them fairly soon after. I remember I got this and the Satan Pit sets, just along with the, the lift and with the, the Doctor in an order. That's and another one I could have picked for 2007, oh, actually. Such an exciting time. Having, having packages like that come to the door and yeah. um, and like the. Oh, they had like five inch figures like from the past few years on there as well. So things like the, the Cyberman, my first Cyberman figure I got from BBC Shop and all sorts of stuff like that. I think I've still got the. The order history somewhere, a record of it somewhere. It's a, it's a nice nostalgic thing to go back through, isn't but it just, um, isn't it? But yeah, they, I mean, this set. I mean, what can I say? We, we've both we've both picked we've it. Both so picked it, good. it. It is really different, and I remember this coming out the week after Eleventh Hour. Yeah. Uh, or, or in fact, maybe the, the week sort of following it, mm. almost. Um, so are those your originals? Yeah. There. So Were this it? this one is the there's an original okay. like the blue bow tie one because I could never part with this one. Yeah. Uh, I did sell my Raggedy Doctor, but then 
in the 11th hour tweet along that was happening in you know, the hashtag fish custard one um i was seeing i think it was luke spillan did a, t- a tweet with the raggedy doctor figure and i was like why did i get rid of that <laughs> so um i uh i think someone yeah. someone on twitter offered me uh, offered yeah. me one so i was gonna um, say he looks pretty new to say he's this, yeah, this I mean, one yeah compared to mine with little kind of bits where the paint's rubbed off yeah. and stuff and and i have re- i've replaced both of these i mean since, I, it may but, well um, be a one from did it get re-released in B&M pack or something it like that? did in 2014. I don't know. I mean, yeah. the legs are a bit loose, so uh, okay. you never know. But Interesting. yeah, um, it was obviously kept very well. Uh, but no, the blue bow tie, Matt, I remember. Um, yeah, that was the Toys R Us one. Yeah, yeah. And, but I didn't know about the notion of exclusives and of stuff course. at the time. Yeah. I just ordered it from Toys R Us because where else would you order it from? I just thought, oh, there you go, Toys R Us, mm. well, I'll order it. And I saw people online saying like, Oh, this is the blue bow tie version, and all I'd seen online were the pictures of the red one, you yes. know, as it promoted of it. Of course. And yeah. on Toys R Us website, it just showed a picture of the red bow tie one. And I was like, oh, oh my god, I wonder which one I'm gonna get. And then through the post came the blue bow tie wow. um, version uh, with the brown boots as well. Um, I mean, yes. obviously, you've got this this guy now. I've you? got an elsewhere, yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, but that was yeah. the one. That was the the pack that I that I got, which was incredible, lovely. Um, the amount of fun um, that that brings, the, that packaging that was only seen once, mm. that kind of weird time when the show's not quite settled on this is our look, you yeah, know, this is our brand. Style guide it's like, anything. well, it's we'll, we'll kind of go for this yeah. and you know see if mm. it works. It was still in the clamshell. It was, was it clamshell packaging. You know, yeah, it, it was. was yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, just hours of hours of fun yeah it was a real moment in time that i mean um as well i could have said the sonic screwdriver that was released i was gonna say around should, the same should time, mention that yeah, as that, well which was a, yeah, yeah the same um, kind of thing again I, i've since replaced it with like the the touch control one and actually the other day i was um the batteries in that hadn't, hadn't worked for ages so i thought i'll try some new ones and fortunately it like, came back to life <laughs> it was brilliant um but yes yeah, certainly it's... The original release there again in that blue packaging and it's sort of big tube, plastic tube. Um, those, those two, those two items. Such a, a moment in time. Uh, I remember the thrill of that, and then the thrill of the wave afterwards as well. Like seeing that wave, the first wave with obviously with this guy again, with, with Amy, with the the red paradigm, the Einside Daleks. And then your your winder and, and Hawthorne and, yeah, and the, Professor Bracewell. The, yeah, Hawthorne. What was all that about? <laughs> yeah, just they were obviously oh. like we'll just get double use out of this body and be like, yeah, you know, yeah. Tom it Lindsay, by the way, time. thank you very much for that. That was I was just double checking. Uh, ah, yes, of uh, he's had various names on. I think he was he went by Tailored Tube for a time. Yeah. Um, so uh, yes, um, I mean, what a great era of merch. Yeah. I loved that first wave so much. I remember the the. The kind of like, oh my god, what do I go for? Yeah, well, which ones? Which you, ones do I go? I, I got um, Amy Pond because yes. I was like, I have to have a new companion. Yeah, um, and the Ironside Dalek because I was like, yeah. it's just such a definitive. I think, look. I think for me it was those yeah. two, and then and then my brother the got as well. my brother got the drone and Peter the Winder. Yeah, um, so yeah, I think I managed to save Peter the Winder uh-huh. from destruction, but I think the drone lost a few. <laughs> and uh, yeah. naturally yeah uh, very great and again I mean we, we sort of had something like this recently with that regeneration set with Jodie and, and uh, the 14th mm-hmm. Doctor but mm-hmm. I mean again I'd kill for something like this again it's just um, a fantastic idea it yeah. was just I mean, so good m- maybe not shooty with his underpants or whatever yeah but... I think that might be a bit questionable <laughs> might, but might not quite work you never know but, uh, yeah well you never know I will also yeah. shout out as well another one that I tried to find um, for my item but I couldn't um, the program for Doctor at the Proms 2010. Oh yeah. Um, I got the. Incredible. They did all the Paradigm Daleks for the different programs, so I picked out an Eternal Dalek for my program. It was it was kind of an amazing time when I think Matt Smith really did a trouting in the sense of proving that you know the show could carry exactly. on yeah. and it could be go stronger than ever. And oh, yes. 2010 was a real a real year of excitement and. Um, and fun and just magical I think magical is the best way to describe that kind of time um, there was so much I, I think we could have honestly been here all day talking about an item from 2010 but obviously we've settled on we've probably settled the definitive yes. thing you know this set was just the best I would love to get a boxed version actually yeah just because it's so special you know? uh-huh. so there you go there you go 
Amazing. 2010. On to our final year mm. for this part now. Yes. Uh, till part two. So 2011. So um, for this, we were sort of saying before, weren't we? There's, there was stuff going on like the, the figures with the flesh sachets and your flesh masks and your, your yeah. goo and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there was Doc 2 Monster Invasion as well, the card game, which I, I could have picked again. Um, that, that again, like... It was like Battles in Time, but I was sort of there from the start, so I could properly see that through. And I remember the excitement of the second set coming out that autumn with the packaging with the silence on it. Stuff yeah, they, they the... kind of re- revamped it. Yeah, it was, it was really through. nice. Yeah. So, so that's mm-hmm. an honourable mention, really. Um, the little side mat as well, the bump and go side mat. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> um, just quickly. There that we is, go. I have got another. I, I've got. A, I've been sort of to and fro of my 2011 mm. items so I will mention another after you've said yours but okay um, I mean do you know if it still works I don't think it does actually no is it on usually you have that thing where you leave it on the on switch <laughs> yeah no no I don't think mine does either and um, I might have told this story before but I remember when I got this and I might have actually got it I think I think it was the turn of this year or, or maybe into 2012 when I actually got it but um, I remember once we'd gone on holiday and it had rained back home we got back home <laughs> i went over to the swing in the garden and at the foot of the swing there was my cyber <gasps> no! there in like wet grass and stuff oh my god and i think i picked it up and it actually still worked i think after that wow. so, somehow surprisingly wow. but these days it doesn't doesn't fare so well I'd, again i'd love to get a, a kind of pristine one of those and have it working again i remember when i remember when it came so out exciting. it was the kind of the, the toy of that christmas for a doctor who fan yeah. do you know what i mean there was like this is the one that you have to have find on your Christmas oh, yes. tree. And like, it's such a genius idea being like, here's a small little prop from the show that we can almost, I mean, it's obviously not life size, but like uh, for a kid, this is like a, a oh, life, yeah, like, it feels, you've got it? the yeah. prop from yes. the show. Yeah. Like, you know, um, oh, yeah. I remember it being absolutely fantastic. The fan film fun that we had with this. <laughs> um, I remember doing a, a, we went to my oh. school and did a fan film um, where the school was kind of like, standing in for Cambridge we brought this side mat along <laughs> and it was kind of like we'd, we'd do a shot and we'd be like oh. I might get my brother to sit outside for shot and be like and when we cue you you're going to let that roll across the across the screen um, so I mean just perfect it's kind of up there with like if they did a meat, beat the meat plush it's like it's a no brainer exactly. for a product yeah. that you could make yeah. from the show and they did so many I mean nano recorder aside Series oh, yeah, series six that for Christmas did, uh, that year, actually. Yeah. Series six did have a really interesting idea of well, aside from the figures, yeah. let's try and make some props like the psychic cube. Yeah. I never got that at the time. No, no. But um, I got it after the fact and yeah. loved it. I thought it was so clever. Like yeah. it's just a genius. Yeah, there's a idea. few things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's the cube, and then over there, but like the the the, tar- the, the, the junk tars are on one of the figures. The junk tars, yeah. Mm-hmm. Side map and the recorder, like yeah. you say, the, the the goo pod. There's quite a few things. They kind of um, went. Let's think outside the box and try something new. And yeah. it worked in some cases. It you know, yeah. was a nano recording. Well, I mean, speaking of which, um, the, th- the thing I've gone for is, is something else that characters sort of ventured into that year. Um, it's not the most exciting example of the range. Um, I think I know what you're going to go but for. But it was the first thing I got from this range. And I was very, very excited at the time. Yes. Um, so it was, of course, the character building that's... Make sure the doors are in the right position before that I put was it down. the most awkward thing. Those doors, I swear <laughs> to God. So I think it came with these two figures as well of the Doctor and Amy in his red bow tie. Uh, perhaps not with the stands, but it came with the figures, I think. Yeah. And again with this, um, it's one of those things. I, I have a thing. I probably saw some images of this from Toy Fair that year. Mm. I think I, I did actually. I think I did because yes, I remember, I remember seeing, Toy like, Fair that year. Yeah, it was yeah. a bit different, and they had like all the doctors there and some of the sets and things and the TARDIS I think and um, the first kind of promo of them as well of the lineup of the first wave yeah. I remember that vividly and, and they looked they looked almost like Duplo figures like quite this big, is exactly bigger scale what I was going to say yeah. so I, I saw that image and I was like oh these are going to be yeah like Lego Duplo yeah and then I think so what did I do I think First of all, I ordered, probably again from BBC Shop or somewhere, I think that one and the Dalek control room set. Um, expecting them to... I, obviously, they weren't Lego Duplo, but as a kid, you don't kind of register the, yeah. the, the scale and size mm-hmm. of things. So I opened them up, uh, the boxes, and kind of saw this little dude and was like, oh my God, yeah, that's like so cool. Like, 
He's not, as, he's not as big as I yeah. thought he'd be. He's a nice little, cool, little, concise mm. little dude. Mm. Um, and I remember having these, like, taking them in my pocket to school or whatever, yeah. or all that kind of stuff, you know, collecting that wave. Um, did you get the full feeling, wave? I did eventually, yeah. So, like, feeling the packets to try and find, you know, which figures were inside. Um, it was a bit of a pain. So I remember the um, the Silurian, I think it was Rastak, that was one of the rarer ones. I managed to get that like on a Doctor Who Adventures issue as a free gift. Mm-hmm. And the the three that were the most difficult to track down were the Smiler? ones that you... The smile was okay, actually. Oh, really? I always wanted a smile. I'm not, I can't remember how I got it, but I did somehow. But mm. the, the three most difficult ones were the ones where there wasn't anything distinctive that you could feel the packaging for. Yeah. So the blue Dalek. I'd, I'd feel for Daleks and get the red one time and time again. I've got loads of them over there. I mean, it's, like you've got an army. Yeah, a whole army of them yeah. on the factory. Yeah. Oh, the hair, and, yeah. Uh, it's like, about the factory set. Um, and then uh, years later, I got the um, the two rarest figures, which was like the the 11th Doctor without the jacket, but it's the blue shirt and bow tie, yeah. which never actually happened on screen. Yeah. He only ever wore the red, and I think the angel two part, mm-hmm. the red variant of that costume. But I think go. actually in the lodger, the I think there's a moment in the lodger oh, when he has Maybe. it. But okay. What what kid's gonna know about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and the then the angel with the serene face as well. I mean, I, years later I got them. Um, they went for so like a tenner or like fifteen quid upwards. Mm-hmm. But I Do you remember, remember the, the ones I, with the certificates, the, the, like. The well, gold they were the rarest ones, yeah. of them all, weren't they? Yeah. Did you get any um, of those? Or? No, no. I, again, I'd love to have got them, or, or maybe end up being like a real oh, thing still got them one day somehow. Do you know, know what my first exposure to those sets were? Um, at first, I was kind of I was judged against it. I was like, "This is right. ridiculous. These look yeah. stupid. Why yeah. am I going to invest my time in these? Awful." Um, but then I realised they were doing a cross promotion thing. I think again in like, oh, the Daily Mail or the, or the Sun yes. or something like that. Oh, God, I um, and I was like. Go on then. I'll I'll get I'll get the eleventh Doctor. Why not? Um, so I got the blue bow tie eleventh mm. Doctor figure from that, and it was like next issue Amy Pond. I was like, yeah. okay, I guess I have to have Amy Pond as well. So I'll I'll try and get the Amy Pond. I remember going, you know, when you, you like you go behind the till yes. and you ask yeah. them, and mm. then it was like, and there's a Dalek next issue, and I was like, well, I've got to get a Dalek. So mm. I got that, and by the time I'd done that, I think I was going out and I bought the Weeping Angel kind of the the set, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah mm. and. Um, I don't think I got many of the play sets. The only no. other play set I think I got was the TARDIS one. Yeah. But that was when it had been discounted to about 10 quid from <laughs> right. somewhere. Um, so I think I paid full price for that, like uh-huh. with some birthday money or something when it came out. And yeah, it retailed for like 50 quid. That's a lot of money. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so like I didn't have like a, you know, a diehard investment in mm. the range, but I do remember having the initial excitement of being yeah. like, "Well, I'll get these ones, and then I'll." No, see I remember what those happens. newspaper ones, and I um, it was a Saturday, Sunday, Monday thing, and I remember like hounding my parents to like try and get Make sure that they got the paper. So I, I missed out on the eleventh Doctor one. Have you got um, it since? I've got it since. Yes, and then like because we didn't really have any Sainsburys nearby at the time where we were living, so. I made them drive out of their way to get the <laughs> Amy Pond on the Sunday, and then on the Monday, uh, I finally persuaded uh, them to like, ask someone else who did live near one to get it on my behalf. Uh, and you can get them quite cheaply now on, on eBay, yeah, but yeah. Um, at the time, they seemed like such a kind hard of a, to get. Like, I've got to things. get it now, or I'll yeah. never get it again. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, I think we got the duplicates of all of them because my brother obviously yeah, you know yeah. when your brother's like just into the same things you yeah. know you're um i think he for some reason got a second mm. one um maybe when we went to the counter and they were like they saw they had two kids they were like oh go on and just have have two or whatever yeah. it was um but yeah interesting very interesting yeah i, I um i did love those and I, I stayed with them till the end i mean i remember that year it was great because you had that initial wave and there was the, the second drop with the second wave with that tardis like, interior place set and other stuff Mm-hmm. Um, in the Dalek factory, I think was part of that, and then um, right at the end of that year, it was sort of when they were starting to become a little bit more exclusive. Like by the time the third yeah, wave came hot. out, the third wave was I, really I didn't difficult, find anywhere. Bar mm. when I was in um, Wales, yeah. for some for some reason, I was in a shop and I managed to get two there, and I never saw them again. Yeah, I think after Christmas that year. I think I had like an order from character or somewhere with a few of those in and like maybe some of the other series six figures. It was definitely that kind of time. And um, 
I remember I was so excited when I got Madden Kavara and like one of the rarer figures yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in the wave. Um, as I got the eye patch and... Rory for uh, that was the, yeah. one of the only figures I got and managed to get the eye patch Rory. I think I, like, I, wow. I found it. Yeah, because I, I think Tesco for some reason always in, in, in big Tesco's, which we didn't go to very often. Mm. But I remember once we did go to one of those and I, I'd heard they had the figures, so I went to go and find them. I think I got the, the Rory from that mm. that wave, and it's literally by like feeling the packets and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was. I know it's so difficult for us to to get, but. Yeah, I got them all in the end and mm. was so pleased to have those ones because the, full, the yeah. full set, yeah, lovely stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, well, as yeah, I, I did love that range. As I mentioned for mine, I've already, on, yeah. I've already mentioned the cyber map, but I wanted to as well bring up another uh, item as well that has kind of been in my room for ages. I've never found a space for it, but um, there was a big event in 2011. I think it was in 20. I've just found the Companions and Allies book deep in the back of my uh, deep yeah. bag. Um, <laughs> But in 2011, there was a big, a big event, um, okay. which um, I was privileged to go see, and it was the perfect time in my life to go see it. Um, Doctor Who Live was... Yes. So did you go and see this? I didn't, no. Mm. I, no, sadly not. Well, I remember, I wow. think it was around my birthday um, that year, uh, that me and a mate from school went to see it. Uh, we went to see it, and then afterwards we went for a meal, and our mums had gone out and bought two 12 inch Jejun figures for, uh, from I Food think, yeah. Planet from us yeah um, <laughs> so this was I mean as a 11 year old this was like the best experience yeah. um, that you could possibly have um, it that's was, when Nicholas Briggs was Nicholas Churchill. Briggs was Churchill yeah. he was a police officer and obviously the voice of the Daleks as well yeah. so I mean he was and he was just, earning his paycheck that isn't night. it like a a loose sequel to Carnival of Monsters yeah so yeah. Um, Nigel is it Nigel I forget his name is playing uh, Vorginson, yeah. the son of Vorg okay. from Carnival of Monsters. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you get, I mean, look at that. Oh, the adverts and stuff. Look My at those goodness. adverts. The Eleven Doctors set. Oh. That could easily have been been in here somewhere. The DS game that could not have been in here, even if it tried. Um, <laughs> and the Wii remote and things. Oh, it was just a lovely spread. I don't think I ever read any of the wow. stuff in here because I was just wanting to keep it so pristine. But, but you've got like a. It kind that of is beautiful, yeah. old-fashioned uh, thing. There's Nicholas Briggs, the silhouette. There he is. I guess they had to make him a silhouette because Ian McNeese was not, <laughs> oh not being there. Oh my god! Um, I'm seeing there was a one oh, that, that I distinctly the remember place that I just saw as well. Did you? Re- yes. I mean, that was the, those were the days. Oh, the soundtrack. Um, yeah. There was a bit in here and they had like Ooh, these weird stencil tracing paper, tracing paper of like ships and stuff like that. Um, but I do remember a distinct element. Yeah, there we go. Um, oh, it's either. The Vorgensen character. Yeah. What is his name? I've forgotten his blooming name. He's from, I think it's, is it Nigel? Nigel, Nigel someone? rings a bell. Yeah. Nigel oh, God, that's going to really someone. bug me and there'll be people shouting. Nigel Planer. I was I was going to say Nigel. Right. I was going to say Nigel Planer. Um, but yes, there you go. Uh, and I oh. think, I believe... Ben Foster was there conducting, oh. um, but it was oh, it was amazing. It was so cool, uh, and uh, you know Matt Smith being there um, in with visual trickery, um, the the fight scene at the end between the Paradigm Daleks oh, and the Cybermen, yeah. practical effects just going mad. The music was incredible. It was a sort of like an electronic rock hard punk version of these themes. Uh, the vampire girls, the the clockwork robots with knives in their arms. It was just a fab experience. All the, yeah, all those monsters are on the picture. They were all present, were they? They were all yeah. present. There's not a single one of those that wasn't Amazing. there. They did the scarecrows. They did the Silurians. Yeah. You know, with their wow. guns and everything. It was fab. That's I do remember incredible. the clockwork robots though, because obviously the instruments would have been very precise. You know, the sort of like syringes and things so they just literally had blades in their arms Ooh. and um, there was a moment when Nigel Planer goes you know beware these robots have knives and all of them on the stage flung up their arms and a friggin <laughs> kitchen knife <laughs> came out from their arm and uh, oh. oh the I mean the best moment of the whole thing was when um, I think at the midpoint the show kind of the big house lights of the arena come on and everyone's thinking what's going on here and police storm in saying you know uh, don't remain calm it's all okay we're just uh, we've had an issue in the area we need to lock down and you know because, and everyone's thinking by god looking around at nick briggs and all these other actors running in in their police outfits um and because everyone's so 
you know, focused on all these police running in, you turn back to the stage and there's a weeping angel that's just oh. appeared on the stage. Um, and um, each police officer goes up to investigate one by one. And uh, each time, rather than turning off the lights, which I think would have been a health and safety issue, to kind of do the being caught by an angel, they shone bright lights in the audience's face, so kind of blinded. Cool. And the person would then have disappeared in a puff of smoke. Um, great theatre wow. trickery. It was just a fab experience. There's be so much, uh, so many stories there. I mean, cause, yeah, like, because I didn't experience it, and there'll be loads of people, and uh, well, all these events and things, and things mm. like the Doctor experience as well. And there must be so much stuff there, like, to be released, like, inserts, yeah. recordings or whatever, like, little I would, cutaways I, and I, I scripts always, and things. Yeah, I always wanted so a, good to an experience album. that somehow. Yeah, I yeah, wanted, like, yeah. an album of the, the music they did for this, because the, yeah. the, the versions of the, the of the music they did was just brilliant. Um, oh, it's such a shame they didn't do a recording of it, because it's one of those things that will never be kind of seen again mm. really aside from sort of th- it was that era when we didn't quite have iPhones yet so we, the only footage is kind of shaky you know yeah, yeah. phone footage um, but I couldn't oh, I, I couldn't not mention that it's a bit similar to the proms uh, brochure that I had as well from 2010 uh, I just wanted to have at least one of them on there because the experiences around the show that they, they were having at the time were just uh, spellbinding so um, that's that's on there Incredible. For that for that reason. Lovely. There you stuff. go. Yeah, I don't think there's any space for me to put it on there, so I'm just going to sort of hold it. Well, what, what a smorgasbord of, of, of items we've had there. Yeah, uh, a fantastic first part. To this, I'm sure you'll agree. Um, let us know all of your thoughts, your nostalgia uh, about the items that we've picked, and play along at home as well. Yeah. Um, if you were a fan at this time, you know what? Yeah. What did you get? In these years, that kind of uh, really sticks out for you in your memory. Let, let us know down in the comments. Um, we'll be back for part two at some point in the future, so stay tuned. We'll be looking at what 2012, 13, 14, and 15 next. Interesting. So um, interesting. think about what we're going to pick for those years. Gosh, there's going to be um, some interesting ones, isn't there? As we get kind of nearer yeah. the kind of period when there was less merch less being stuff. released, but I'll have to kind of yeah really home think home hard in. about that. Yeah. Um, this has definitely been a really hard one. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? There we go. Mm. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you again. Uh, but otherwise, bye bye. Bye bye. Tom Baker's 90 today. Happy birthday. <laughs>